Good morning, Nikki. You are the first one today, Nikki Okoro. Eric Osada, <laughs> you became second. Nikki came just ahead of you. Landon Adebayo, Oluwato Idvidemi, Tokumbo. Good morning, everyone. Joko Freeman. Yomi Jekede. Obi Ojimadu. Ngoya Sharis. Daniel Shoma. GD Craig. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome, welcome. Rochelle White. Fire Yua Fumelayo. Prince Savi. Savi. Good morning. Jolomi White. Christy Bassi. Olayinka Abraham. Bill Daniels, La, uh, Purity Life, that's Pastor Sufficient, John Apia, Tina Ante, good morning, good morning, good morning, nice to see you all. Mbalenle Syrup. Ayodele Solomon, Ali Paradise, Poku Olaoluato Sin. Good morning, Peter Ayodele, Tyron James, Pearl David, Christine Joy. Anastasia McDonald is back. Wow, look who came in today. Anastasia McDonald, wow, the most missed girl on the platform. <laughs> Look who is back. Wow, wow, wow. Elizabeth Adeshola, Victor Gudikpe, Monique Ikeade, Ojekwa Israel, Adenike Ogunyemi, Fumi Jeboda, Olufumi Loko, Mercy Olaiton, Emmanuel Amagada. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Ojo Olakwek, Martin, Sister Kate, Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, here we go. As you are coming in, uh, please let's go and share the link as we normally do. Uh, look for the share button under your video. It should be somewhere there under the video. Just go share the link. Let's quickly go share that link. And once you've shared the link, then we'll be ready to go. Let's quickly go and share the link, please. Uh, go share the link and uh, so that we could start on time. So go look for your own share button. Let's go press that share button. Write some remarks there or some comments for people uh, to be able to see it and uh, uh, so that they will know if it's worth them watching or not. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, if you have all shared, I'm sure you have all shared the link. If you have shared the link, then let's go. Then let's go. Today's topic, uh, of course, this week you all know that I've been talking about ladies. <laughs> I've been talking about how to help our ladies get ready for marriage and get ready for life in general, not just marriage. My life does not stop at uh, having a husband living with you or having children. That is not what life is about. So uh, life is about helping ladies to get ready to deal with the challenges of life and to be able to cope and be able to wither their way through life and successfully at that as well. So, um, yeah, so I've been talking to the ladies and the topic for today is Self-sufficiency, a great force in a lady's life. Self-sufficiency, a great force in a lady's life. Self-sufficiency, a great force in a lady's life. So self-sufficiency is a great, great force in a lady's life. So that's what we are going to be examining today. Self-sufficiency. And of course, you know, I've given you a lot of this. I've given you many, many points.
point uh, in this regard. So self-sufficiency as a force, a formidable force in the life of every lady. Every lady that uh, has self-sufficiency, uh, she's going to enjoy her life much better than a woman that doesn't have self-sufficiency. And it doesn't matter if she's married or she's not married. A lady without self-sufficiency is going to become a victim sooner or later of the husband, of the family, of the people. I mean, the world is mean to women and the world is wicked to the lady girl. And, uh, and what the world does is just to take advantage of them. Uh, the world use, uses every means, the slightest opportunity to take a ride and, you know, on the woman and uh, to take advantage of her, to abuse her, to use her, to oppress her. And, uh, yeah, it's bad. So the only way for a girl to counteract that and to protect herself is to become self-sufficient, is to become self-sufficient. And that's why these topics that have been treating all this week, I think they are priceless. They are priceless to any girl, especially any young girl. And even if you have boys growing up, growing up in your home, I think the boys need to know this as well. The boys must know how to value their sisters. Because when you are growing up as a boy and a girl in a family, sometimes you think you are just the same. Sometimes boys don't know that there is a big difference between girls and boys. And they don't know how to treat the girls differently. Now they just treat them like any other kid and, and they, teach, they treat them like they treat each other. So it is, uh, it is paramount that you know, every parent, every mom teaches their kids who a lady is, who a girl is, and how to treat a girl like a woman, like a girl, like a lady. And also, it is also paramount for every parent that is having a baby girl to train that girl to, be, to prepare herself better for life and to learn to make herself self-sufficient in life before she meets the crude, hard, wicked, cold world out there. Because uh, the world is mean to the girls. So, um, so that's what I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to start addressing today. Now, the number one point, talking about self-sufficiency, the very first point I want to, I want to address today is the, th is the very thing that girls fear most. Girls are, girls are always afraid of mm, loneliness. Uh, I don't think it's the girls who are afraid, really. I think the society makes them, and their parents and relatives, makes them to think that to remain single is bad. So I think uh, women, maybe not all of them, but I think there is a stereotype in the society making ladies to think or making women to think uh, that women, that, that no, that making women to think that uh, women should not be alone. And because of their emotional, mm, because of their emotional instability, you could say, or the mood swing of the woman, Sometimes they themselves begin to think that the only thing that could cure their mood swings and uh, and and their you know that could really keep them happy is to have a man around them. There is no greater lie than that lie in the whole world. The greatest lie that has been told to the woman to the girl is that she has to have a man beside her to be happy. I will say the opposite. I will say it the other way. That the truth is that a woman will not be on, I mean, a woman will remain happy until she gets a woman, she, she gets a man around her. The truth is that 
<laughs> a woman does not become unhappy until a man appears in her life. Uh, every woman is living a fairy tale life until she begins to date, until she begins to have boyfriend and husband and things like that. That, that really is where the tragedy of the woman lies. That really is where all the pains, I mean 90% of the pain in the life of a woman is always connected with a man that they are getting themselves hooked up with. So really, to say that, uh, to say that every, a, a lady needs a man to survive and to say that uh, every woman needs to marry and, and that way she will resolve her problem is the deception of hell. It's, it's a great deception, great lie. So for you ladies to be thinking that you need to get a man or a boyfriend or you need to get into a relationship or get into a marriage relationship because you want to resolve your problems, oh, you will be broken. Oh, you will be so broken. Oh, oh, you will be so broken. You will be so disillusioned. You will be so beaten hard that <laughs> you will cry your blood out if you are going to a relationship to resolve your problems. If you are going to a relationship to resolve your loneliness. If you are growing, going to a relationship to, to be happy, you are going to be beaten so hard. <laughs> In fact, that is why a lot of ladies end up divorcing. That is why a lot of women end up divorcing because they are not quite prepared for the kind of uh, challenge that marriage gives them. They are not quite prepared to the kind of, for the kind of uh, troubles that they meet in marriage. Actually, no matter how good your marriage is, no matter how good your husband is, even if your husband is Jesus, Jesus you're, you will still run into more problems in marriage than when you are single. If, like I said, even if you are married to Jesus, you will still, your, prob your problems will still increase 10 times minimum. So... Marriage increases a lady's problem, complicates a lady's life at least 10 times. The same thing with a man's life. It complicates your life at least 10 times more than before you are married. You know, so, so, you know, so the only people who are supposed to go into marriage are people who are ready for multi multiplied problems. For people, there, there is, the marriage is only for people who are already set, who are already ready to to tackle more problems, to uh, encounter more challenges, and to be able to resolve their problems. So a marriage is only for men and women who are experts, who have become good in resolving problems. If you, want, if you don't want to resolve problems, you want to run away from problems, and you think marriage is the place to run to, to, <laughs> to escape problems, <laughs> You are so naive. That means you are so naive. <laughs> you don't run to marriage to reduce problems. You go to marriage to increase problems. You go to marriage to solve problems. You go to marriage only because you, sh you are sure and you know that you are fit enough, you are prepared enough to resolve problems, that you have become good in resolving any challenge that will come to your life. So, so as a result... Uh, as a result, <laughs> as a result, I want to prepare the ladies and I want you all to be well informed and be well prepared much ahead of time before you go into marriage. And okay, that, like I said, never try to go into a marriage because you are trying to go and resolve one problem or the other. You know, go to a marriage already fulfilled. Go to a marriage already self-sufficient. Go to a marriage, I mean, already knowing that you are good by yourself. Now, uh, and so, but before I talk about marriage, I even want to, again, uh, make the point that, you know, don't put marriage on your top list as a lady. 
once you begin to put marriage as the most important thing in your life, as the most important thing you must do, as the most important thing you need to do in life, you begin to get yourself into a tight corner. Manipulations begin to affect you. You begin to get manipulated. You begin to look out. You begin to haunt. You begin to, you know, dream, daydreaming and thinking about every man as a potential husband. And you begin to be, you know, you begin to be distracted from life. And that is already a bad place to be. If you are entertaining uh, thoughts of this could be my husband, this could be my husband, oh, that looks like you are already hunting. You are already looking for a potential husband. To look for a potential husband is actually to, uh, to, to book your failure. It's to book your failure. Any lady that looks for a man, any lady that is hunting for a man, will always, 98% of the, of the case, will always get into the wrong hands. You will always get into the wrong hands. So, um, so, so, you know, for you to really be happy and for you, you to really be fulfilled, uh, let me tell you what, start by removing that question from your table. All, all, all together. Just start by removing the question of marriage from your table, from your mind, from your thought. Just remove it. Just totally get it off your mind. Get it off your mind. Look at yourself, first of all, as a human being rather than as a woman. Look at yourself, first of all, as a whole person rather than as a lady that is just there to be taken or to be, you know, given over to a man. You know, don't look at yourself as somebody's second half. Why should you see yourself as second half when you could see yourself as a whole person? So instead of you looking at yourself as a second half of somebody else, you know, first of all, construct your life as a whole person, as a total man, as a complete person. Treat yourself as a complete human being first. You know, don't be looking at yourself as somebody to complement other person's life. Don't be looking that if they, I mean, it's so demeaning to look at yourself that way. I mean, it's an insult for you as a woman to be looking at yourself as somebody to go and complete another person's life. I mean, what a disgrace. I mean, is it not shameful for you to even think like that as a girl? Uh, don't demean yourself like that. Don't put yourself so low, down, so low. So uh, uh, what you should do is, first of all, see yourself as complete. See yourself as happy. See yourself as wholesome. See yourself as fulfilled, satisfied, all by yourself. Only a completely I mean, a, a complete person, only a sufficient person, a fulfilled person by herself, can go and build a happy life. If you are looking for that fulfillment or for that uh, sufficiency and for that happiness in marriage, you will be broken. It will, you will be let down in a very rough way. So. What I want to talk to you about today is learning how to learn to live by yourself and with yourself. Learning to live with yourself happy, fulfilled, satisfied. Learning, just learn to live by yourself, with, with yourself, fulfilled, happy, satisfied. That is what a girl must do before she begins even to entertain any man. Let them be running all around you. Let them be running door to and fro. Let them be even be on duty, you know, coming to chase after you. But you should know and you should tell yourself, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to give up my freedom, my liberty until I learn to live with myself. So girls, ladies, if you have not learned to live with yourself, if you have not learned to be happy with yourself, don't even entertain any man or any any proposal from anybody. Don't entertain it. Learn to live and be happy by yourself. So that's the first point I want to I want to address today. Learn to be happy all alone. Learn to be happy all alone. Live as a single lady and learn to be happy as a single lady. You must overcome the notion that 
To be single means to be lonely. It's a lie. To be single doesn't mean to be lonely. And uh, women talk about loneliness as if singleness equals to loneliness. No. To be single means to be complete. To be single means to be self-sufficient. To be single means to be happy by yourself. To be single means not to entertain another person in your life. To be single means not to bring somebody to come and spoil your joy and to come and spoil your party. To be single means to, to, to go about enjoying life all by yourself the way you want to see it and the way God wants you to live your life. And uh, so don't buy into the lie that says singleness means loneliness. What it means before you are single doesn't mean that you are lonely. So learn, become an, I mean, learn to live a happy life single first. Learn to, you know, learn to throw away, to overcome that notion, that lie that you have to overcome loneliness. Why should you be lonely? Because you are single doesn't mean you are lonely. And because you are single doesn't mean you have to be lonely. And actually, let me tell you this thing. Let me tell you something. I cannot emphasize this enough. Oh, God help me. Do you know that loneliness, even, not even singleness, but loneliness, is one of the greatest gifts that God has given to man? To man and to a woman. Loneliness is one of the greatest gifts of God to us. No wonder Jesus will always go away to a lonely place to be alone. Why? He, he even had people around him, but he was always running away from people. To be alone. Why? Because he, would, he doesn't want people to steal away from him. One of the greatest blessings that exists. One of the greatest blessings that God himself has given to him. And that blessing is the ability to be alone. So, but the ladies have not been told the truth. And the ladies have not told themselves the truth. They have not been told that loneliness is one of their greatest assets. Loneliness is one of their greatest blessings. And um, so if you don't know that, and if you don't know that loneliness, and not even loneliness, it doesn't have to be loneliness, but uh, singleness is, is a blessing. If, if you have not been told that singleness is one of your greatest assets, then you'll be running away from singleness. You'll be running away from being single. You'll be running away from loneliness because you are thinking that you are missing something or you are thinking that you are at a loss. But really, if your eyes open, if you get understanding, if you get wisdom, you will discover that loneliness or singleness is such a huge blessing. It's such a huge um Resource is such a great wealth that God has handed over to your hands that you should think twice. You should rather think twice before you exchange it for, for a man. You should rather think twice before you exchange your singleness and you give it up. Giving up your singleness is actually one of the greatest, uh, one of the greatest losses in your life. You've got to Think very well, and you've got to weigh the advantages and the disadvantages of losing your of losing your singleness. So you know, you know, every girl, but that either you want to marry or you don't want to marry, you must still learn to live a single life. You must learn to enjoy your singleness. You must learn to admire your single life, your lonely life, your life of your being alone. You must learn to enjoy that. You must know that it's one of the greatest blessings you have. And you must know that you must, you must, you know, savor it, savage it. You must, you must fight for it. You must know it is an asset. It's one of your greatest assets. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something right now. That singleness is a greater blessing than being married, at least for you. Now, marriage might be a greater blessing in terms that you have children or you have uh, somebody around you, but being single makes you to focus more on fulfilling God's will, 
on meeting God's desires. I mean, the Bible says that he that is single, he that is alone, thinks about the things of the Lord. So that's what Paul said. It makes you to be focused on things of the Lord and on fulfilling your purpose and on living your life the way you want it to be. But marriage, like I said, is more a complicated life because then you only not be thinking about God's will and God's desire for your life and the things of God. You will now be forced to be thinking of the things of man. You will now be focused more on thinking about your spouse's uh, needs and about your children's needs. Uh, it's incomparable. The advantage of being single is totally incomparable to the, the advantages of being married. That's why there is no marriage in heaven now. That's why there's no marriage in heaven. If the, if the advantage of being married had, or had been superior and had been more or greater than the, marriage of, uh, the advantage of being single, there would have been marriage in heaven. But there is no marriage in heaven because there is no need for it. It's a distraction. In heaven, it's going to be a distraction. That's why it will not happen. It will not happen. No marriage in heaven. Even the one you are married to here on earth, you have to be separated when you get to heaven. <laughs> Everybody have to go their own ways. <laughs> So don't make a big deal of marriage as if that's the only thing you are existing for. Don't make a, 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 a big deal of uh, marriage as if if you don't have it, you are doomed and you are unfortunate and you are unlucky and you are, you know, things are bad for you and things are bad, you know. Like, no, no, no. Don't buy into those lies. Don't buy into those lies. Like I said, even the ones that are married, the Bible urges us that they that are married should behave as if they don't marry that they that have husbands should do and think as if they don't have. They that, don't, that, that, that have wives should even behave and think more of themselves as if they don't have. Live independent of that. Why? Because the greatest status of where you could achieve more on earth and you serve God better on earth is when you are focused on the things of the Lord. And the Bible tells us that they that are not married are more concerned about the things of the Lord. Why do those that are married are more concerned about the things of their spouses? So just face it. So don't think that singleness is a curse. I mean, especially in Africa and in developing countries and some cultures, people have made the women to think that being single is a curse. I even heard that people will go to any length to get rid of their singleness. Can you, <laughs> Can you imagine that? <laughs> Can you imagine that? That people will go and do sacrifice, people will go and pray, people will go and give money out to some dubious prophets, people will go and, uh, you know, they said that people, people just do all kind of crazy stuff just for them not to be single. The very same thing that God said we should be. In fact, Paul was advising us and he said he would have preferred for all of us to remain single in the Bible as a matter of fact. <laughs> it's because that's not the highest life. The highest life is a life that is placing the master. The highest life is a life that is focused on God. That is the highest life. And that highest life could be lived better when you are not married. So even though it's good to be married, you could have children. We have progen uh, pro you know, we could have rep reproduction, and you know, get, you know, the human race will be will continue going. But why should human race continue to grow at your cost? <laughs> so it's not for everybody. Of course, it's good. Our body demands it that we marry, but but uh, you know, don't let you know people manipulate you. You ladies, that you single ladies, especially women, don't let people think that they are doing you a favor if they if they are proposing for you to marry, if they are proposing marriage to you. Don't let anybody think that they are doing you a favor. Oh, I'm going to marry you, so you should be rejoicing, you should be dancing, or and you should rather be worshiping the guy because he proposes you in marriage. No, 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 no. Don't put yourself down so low. You know, value yourself, respect yourself, honor your own self. And know that, no, you are doing him a favor if you are for you to agree to even marry him. You are the one doing him a favor. He's not doing you a favor. So, But for a girl to be able to think like that, and for a girl to be able to know that she is the one doing him a favor by marrying him, 
She must, first of all, value her own singleness. You must learn to value your singleness. You must value, you must learn to even enjoy your singleness. You must be able to enjoy your singleness and know that being single is not something, no, demonic is not something uh, that is a curse. Like some people say, don't be afraid of your singleness. In fact, like I said, Jesus would normally go ab away from people to hide, to, to be alone. And, and I personally, in my own life, have discovered that there is nothing as precious as solitude. As, as solitude. Even me now, as a married man, I, you know, I have an agreement with my wife, uh, whereby I go away from the family once a month. I take a week uh, from the family just to be alone, just to be alone. Because solitude is one of the greatest inventions in life. All great men, they practice solitude. I mean, the ability to be able to withdraw from the daily activities, from the daily mundane, uh, you know, vanity of life and be able to just be alone, to be able to think, be able to be on your own. Can you imagine you being alone and then you are running away from it when people like us who are married are, you know, begging to be alone for at least one week every month? When Jesus, even the, the author of life, the person who understands life more than every other person, he was single, yet he was still running away from other people who were around him to be able to, be, to, be able to remain alone. So I would like to uh, I encourage the ladies that are here that one of the ways for you to attain self-sufficiency is to change your perspective on singleness. Don't look at your singleness anymore as loneliness. In fact, if anybody uses the word loneliness around you, chase them away. Remove that word from your vocabulary. Just that is one of the ways for you to just set yourself free for good. You need to be free mentally first. You need to set yourself free from that victim mentality, and from that, um, you know, from that, yeah, yeah, from that stereotype that the fact that you are single means you are lonely. You know, no, you are not lonely. Refuse to accept that. You know, reject that notion, and uh, stop referring to yourself as lonely lady, as lonely. You are a single girl, but look at that uh, type of. No singleness or that time when you are alone, look at that as a form of solitude. Look, uh, convert it. Look at loneliness as solitude. Look at loneliness as solitude. Can you imagine how much you could be done during time of solitude? People like Paul, he was forced into solitude. And thank God for that solitude that Paul had. Because that solitude that he had, I mean, it was prison, it was put in prison, but it, it converted that prison term into a time of solitude for himself. And a time of solitude is a time of you no know, of uh, self-development. A time of solitude is a time of um, uh, intellectual development. A time of uh, solitude is a time of uh, self-realization and uh, a time of uh, self-fulfillment. So that is what Paul did. And thank God that they put him in prison. Thank God that that time of loneliness, that time of solitude came to his life. And as a result of that, we are all being blessed today because he was alone. And God allowed that in his own wisdom. God knew that if Paul had been among people, if Paul had, uh, had kept on um, ministering to a crowd and to people, uh, uh, If if if, uh, if if Paul had been busy with church work or apostolic work or ministering to people, if he had been busy doing that, you know what? Uh, he wouldn't have had time to be able to write all those uh, letters and all those scriptures that we have right now. He wouldn't have the opportunity to have to have all the letters and to have. We would not even have the Bible the way we have it today. So. That time of loneliness or that time of solitude was a great blessing, not just to Paul, but to the whole world. In fact, God, you know, God said that a, a, no hair of your head will fall to the ground without his permission. So God allowed and permitted the imprisonment of Paul for 
for him to get some time of solitude, for him to be able, because without that solitude, he would not have been as productive in his life as he became eventually. And the world would not have been blessed. The church would not have been the same. The Bible would not have been the same. The whole world would not have been the same if not for that time of solitude. So can you imagine what could come out of your own time of loneliness? Can you imagine what could come out of your own time of singleness? Can you imagine how much blessing could come out of your own you know, so, time of solitude when you are not imprisoned by somebody else that is push, pushing you to wake up one time and do that, but when you are alone and you are single by yourself? Turn your time of loneliness to your time of creativity. Make sure that loneliness or that time of loneliness that you have or that time of singleness that you have becomes the most productive time in your life. You know, turn it up a productive time. Make sure that it's, it becomes a time of when you develop yourself, when you become uh, productive, when you, you know, come up with your own products, when you add value to yourself, when you build a, a value chain about your life and around your life, about your time. Turn it to a time of conversion, when you are converting that time into some eternal values, eternal qualities, etern I mean, a product and that will bless the world even after you. So, so a time of uh, singleness is your blessing. It's one of your greatest assets that you have. It's one of your greatest treasure and assets that you have. So, because when you are single, you are able to do what you like. You are able to be in charge of your, of your timetable. You are able to be in charge of your, of your schedule. You are able to come up with what you want to do. You are able to plan for your future. You are able to face your destiny. You are able to focus on what God called you to do and what God created you to do. You are able to, you know, tell yourself what you want to do. And you are able to say no to some other things that will distract you. But when, you know, so don't look at a time of uh, singleness as a, as a tragedy. Don't look at it as a loss. I mean, in fact, as a matter of fact, let me tell you something. What you do not, what most likely, what you did not develop in yourself and what you did not attain as a single person, maybe you would never even attain it anymore if you marry. So try to attain and achieve as much things as possible as a single person than waiting for when you are married. Because when you are married, you might, you know, there will be so many distractions. Oh my. Especially for the women, you can't believe how many distractions are there in the marriage. So those ladies who are waiting for themselves to marry before they begin, they begin to, become, to do something for themselves, it is the greatest, greatest mistake they are making. You don't, in fact, <laughs> it's the opposite. You must do and attain as much as possible. You must, you know, you must make sure that you fulfill most of your life plans while you are still single than when you, when you are going to be married. Because once you are married, oh, one year later or two years later or three years later, a baby could come. And once a baby comes, oh, and if you don't have a house help, if you don't have, you know, you know, drivers, if you don't have those things, <laughs> forget about calling, forget about destiny, forget about gifts, forget about potential, forget about <laughs> vision. Those things become very difficult to attain because your life just go out of everywhere. I mean, so if you really want to attain, if you are serious about fulfilling life goals and purpose, if you are serious about becoming somebody on earth, if you are serious about, you know, not just being here as, as another flower or as another plant or tree, but if you want to leave a memory here, if you want to leave a mark on earth here, face it and pursue it hard while you are still single. Pursue it hard. And teach your children. I think every parent needs to teach their children this message. You need to have your girls, especially if you have a baby girl, teach them not to wait uh, for marriage for fulfillment. They must rather be, try to be fulfilled before marriage than after marriage. So, uh, yeah. You know what? I, I have an illustration here. If you know, let me tell you, ladies, I want to compare the single life to, you know, 
You know, because when you are single, when you are alone, just like Jesus does, did, right? He was running away from the crowd to be alone by himself so that he could attain more, he could, he could plan his life more, he could, you know, put his purpose and his priorities first. Well, you know, with the woman, uh, I even think you have to build your life in such a way while you are still single to run away from friends, run away from crowd, run away from family members that just want to run away from all excess luggage, run away from people that are surrounding you to want to get you busy from morning to night. Maximize your singleness. Maximize your, turn your singleness to solitude. And the way I look at it is, it's like, let's imagine, every single lady can associate with this. Imagine that you are weighing 100 kilograms or 150 kilograms as a woman. Imagine that you are weighing 150 kilograms. And excess luggage or excess weight is excess luggage. Excess weight is, is like killing yourself. So look at singleness or solitude as a time when you withdraw, as a diet time. Look at your singleness as your time of singleness, your time of solitude, your, as a time when you are withdrawing from excess food, when you are withdrawing from overeating, when you are withdrawing yourself from, you know, when you put yourself on a diet, on a slim diet, on a weight loss diet, when you are just eating the healthy food, you know, vegetable, all the things that build you up and make you lean. So that is the way I will look at singleness. The time of your singleness, your single life, you should see it as a time when you are shedding unnecessary weight. You should see your single life as a time when you are shedding unnecessary you know, burden, luggage, or unnecessary friends, unnecessary relationships, unnecessary associations, unnecessary fellowship, unnecessary company and companions. So look at your single life as a time of diet. When you are dieting, when you are keeping yourself, when you are keeping yourself from all damaging you know, diets, all damaging excess luggage, excess weight, excess, uh, excess relationship, when you are you know, disciplining yourself, when you are making your life very trim, when you are making your life very focused, it's just like you, know, you see yourself being on a diet program, on a, on a gym program, on a sports program, on, uh, you know, when you go to the sport, to the sport, to work out, you are working out to make your life more focused, life, life more disciplined, life, you no, know, to get the, the kind of life that you want, to get the kind of body that you want. So that is the kind of thing I'm talking about, uh, you know, so the time of your singleness is that time where you are able to, you know, make yourself very trim and slim inside. When you make your life stream, when you put in your life and you focus your life only on the things that are important to you. Only when you are making your life to be, to be, to be, to, to you are getting rid of excessive luggages in your life. You are getting rid of excessive un unnecessary relationships. When you are getting, you are focusing your life only on your goals, only on your vision. When your life is very focused, your life is very determined and your life is bringing out the result that you want it to be. You, that is the time for you to develop your skills, to develop, to get second profession, second degree, third degree, to develop Develop one skill, the third skill, third four. Get yourself engaged. Don't let yourself be bored. You know, develop skills. Develop, you know, get profession. Get, uh, you know, get new you no know, abilities. Develop new skills. Get a second education, third education. You know, uh, become become a master in many other things. Many, many, many things. Learn to do many things that you would not have learned to do. It's a time to 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 maximize your life when you are single. You know, there's nothing like being single. You know, being single is what I mean. Can you imagine people like? Bill Gates, it takes away two weeks uh, at several times a year just to be alone by himself. Can you imagine people like uh, Salvador Dali, you know, those great names you hear, they go and take away like six months, three months just to be alone, to, to practice solitude, loneliness. People like, uh, no, you know, 
you know, uh, all the great names, you know, Thomas Edison, uh, uh, Isaac Newton, uh, all the great names you hear, they were practicing going away from everybody. Some of them never married. Some of them, why? Because singleness or solitude is one of the greatest blessings you could ever have. That is when you could attain so much, when you could focus on leaving a memory, on, on leaving a mark in the world, on, on you know, developing yourself, on attaining the highs that you will not be able to attain if you have not been single. Because you need a lot of time to really be able to make an impact in the world. So I hope, I hope that, is, uh, you know, that, that is helpful for you. But for you to be able to live that kind of life, let me give you another point here as a single lady that will help you. For you to be able to live a kind of focused life, productive life as a single lady, you also uh, must live a life of a life, a purposeful life. You know, you don't just if you are just lying on bed, you know, going to work and looking for a job and just you are just surviving, you are just living, you know, so to survive. Wake up, go to work, wake up, go to work. You don't have goals, you don't have ambition, you don't have vision, you don't have uh, targets, you don't have purpose, you don't have mission in life. Of course, then you'll be bored. Of course, you'll be bored. So for you not to be bored, another thing that you have to do, you must make sure that you are putting targets before yourself on yearly basis on uh, you must have a long term plan you must have a 10 year plan for your life you must have a middle mid term plan a, a plan for 5 years from 1 year to 5 years plan you must have from 5 years to 10 years plan and you must have a yearly plan and a daily plan for your life so put your life on goals don't just make your plan the only plan is that you are waiting for a husband don't just put your life in a, you know, don't frustrate yourself. If you put your life in a place where you say, okay, my only plan is to, I'm just waiting for Mr. Right. And the problem with women is that once you begin to wait for Mr. Right, you lose focus of any other thing. The problem with women is that they are indecisive. So once you have decided that, you, you know, you are waiting, the thing with women is that why they are waiting like that, they are, you know, they are in an indecisive mode. So they will not be able to do many other things. They will not be able to attain a great height anymore because they are in that indecisive position. That indecisiveness is a very dangerous state of mind for you. So, you know, just remove that from your equation. If you, if, if you are going to marry, if you are supposed to marry, if Mr. Wright is supposed to come, you know, God, let, let that be God's problem. Let that be God's question. Don't let it be your own headache. Don't let it be your, don't worry yourself. Don't, you know, make that uh, to be your own priority. You know, set yourself, serve your mind free from it. If you are single, you know, know that you must have, you know, your life must be productive. And the way to do that is, you know, pray to God, seek the face of God, find out uh, the will of God for your life. If you don't know your calling, I have a whole series of teachings that I've done, how to discover your calling, how to discover who you are. You know, go and check some of the links here. There's in these comments, there is a link. And then on my page, Facebook page, there are links everywhere on how to find all the messages that you have missed. And so you find series on how to become or who you are called to become or uh, how to discover your calling there. So make sure that you put some target before yourself as a single lady. You have a long-term dream, at least for 10 years. So I'm focused on attaining that dream. And then after you, have, apart from long-term dream, have uh, a middle-term dream, dream for between one to five years. So apart from that, then have a short-term dream for one year, uh, for one year. And then have, and, and, and the way you do it, these are not different dreams, all right? So what you do is that you, take, you have a general, a long-term dream of 10 years, and then you break that down into five years, and then you break it down into one year, and then you break it down into every day. So what it means is that, for example, you, let's say your big dream is an elephant, big elephant. How do you eat a big elephant? You cannot leave, I mean, eat the elephant just by opening your mouth and swallowing it. What you do is that you cut the elephant down, first of all, into bigger pieces and then into smaller pieces. And then you measure how much of this 
meat can you eat in a day or at a sitting so that's what you do with your vision as well so let's say your vision is to reach out uh one, no ten thousand people in 10 years so that tells you that okay ten thousand people in 10 years that means one thousand people in a year so one thousand people in a year that means how many people in a month okay that means how many people in a day so that's the, the, the way you plan your day so your day your 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 daily plan is coming out of your 10 year plan your yearly plan is also coming out of that your 10 okay let's say this your your uh uh 10 year plan is coming out of your life goals and calling all right then your one year uh, five year plan is coming out of your 10 year plan your one year plan is coming out of your five year plan and your one uh, your every month plan is coming out of your one year plan your daily plan is coming out of that as well so so you cut all those things down just so you are not having different visions and running after them but you are living a purposeful life that way you, you, you make your life to be focused as a single lady you are not entertaining the, the thought of thinking oh who is coming for you today when are they going to marry you and if you begin to think about men you will never attain anything in life so Cut your life out in visions. Cut your life out in vision. And make sure that every day you are pursuing those dreams, those visions. You are pleasing God. You are pursuing the purpose and the will of God for your life. You are not distracted by what people are saying. If you, you say, oh, I don't want to miss what some people live in the lies of thinking, oh, I don't want to miss what belongs to me. Or oh, supposing uh, if I'm not paying attention to the man and supposing it's for me, look, anything that is for you will not pass you by. Anything that is for you, we find you. So you don't be busy finding anything. It's not a woman's duty to be busy looking for a man or something. So don't be busy looking for a man or even thinking about them. Put your life together. Make your life interesting. Pursue your goals and dream, and be focused on that. So, so that is what will keep you focused. That's what will keep you concentrated. That is what will make you to be less distracted in your mind. And that will also save you from a lot of mental attacks. Mental attack in, the in terms of, you know, thoughts and what people are saying. You, you don't have time to be thinking of what people are saying. You don't have time to be thinking of public opinion. You don't have time to be thinking of uh, what people will say or how they understand or how they look at you because you are so focused. Because you have your goal that you are pursuing. You have your goal before you. So uh, that is the way to live if, if you are single. That is the way to live if you are single. Mm. So uh, that way, because, you know, let me tell you why this is even more important. You know, any girl or any single lady that does not have her own plan, this kind of plan that I'm talking about now, if you don't have your, you know, long-term plan, short-term plan, and, you know, middle plan, middle-term plan, if you don't have your daily and your yearly, your, your life plan that you are pursuing on a daily basis, other people will, you will be, if you don't have, if you are not pursuing your own plan, you will be pursuing other people's plan. You will be pursuing the plans, you know, other people will give you their own plans to fulfill. Uh, this culture will give you their plan to fulfill. Your parents and your relatives will be giving you their own plan to fulfill. So if you don't have your own plans, if you don't have your own goals, if you don't have your own agenda, you know, everybody around you will be telling you what to do. So you will be busy wasting your life doing what other people think you should do. You will be uh, busy, you know, wasting your life, you know, you know, pursuing not what you were created to do. You will be pursuing another person's dream. You will be pursuing other people's dream. You will be pursuing the dream of your boss at work. You will be pursuing the dream of your, your company. You will be busy pursuing and living for the dream of your church or your pastor or your denomination. You will be busy and pursuing. You know, they will be, all of them will just be taking advantage of you because you have not put your own life in order. You have not, you know, uh, you, know you have not uh, worked out a goal and a vision for yourself. And so that's why churches take advantage of single people. And they will be telling you, they will pray for you, or your husband will come tomorrow, your husband will come there after tomorrow. Uh, if you come and do sit in the church from morning to night and Monday to Friday, and if you just, you know, you serve the ministry, the vision of the ministry, if you are faithful, they will be telling you, you have to be faithful. So they, will be, they are praying for your husband, the husband will come, you know. So it's the manipulation that 
that, uh, that deprives you of your real calling. It deprives you of really becoming what God intended you to become. So if you don't have your own vision, somebody you will be busy with another man's vision. If you don't have your own passion, other person will give you their own uh, headache. They will give you their headache. They will give you their, their own engagement, their own assignment. They will ke keep you busy doing all the wrong things that you have no business doing. So, so, so it's, a, it's a tragic life for single people. It's a tragic life for single ladies especially. Everybody just exploit them. Everybody take advantage of them. Be and that is mainly because they have no vision of their own. That's only because they cannot get themselves focused on their life goals and vision. And they are not pursuing that consistently. So, so to set yourself free from all those manipulations that will come from you know, family members, relatives, friends, and all that, is the only way to do that is to have your own plan. So any free time you have, you know, uh, they will not be saying, oh, she's not married, she's free. Okay, come and go and get her. You are the one that is being called to do one party or the other. You are the one being called to prepare one marriage, to prepare another person's ministry, to prepare the praise and worship in another one, to prepare one another person's church, to go out from evangelism, to do all kind of things. You'll just be used. You'll be used, 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 and useless, messed up, and thrown away if you don't have your own plan and, and, and your own vision. So learn to live your own life and make that life interesting for yourself. Make that life uh, interesting, but not just interesting. Make it God's life. Let your life line up with God's plan, God's dream for you. Let it be in accordance with God intended for you. Intended for you. Now, let me quickly answer one other question. People will accuse you. This is a word of caution, I will say. People will accuse you and say, if you are living like that, like what I've just said now, you are living for your vision, you are living for your dream. You know what people will come and tell you? People will come and tell you, uh, she's egocentric, she's selfish, she's just living for herself, she doesn't love God, or she doesn't, she's not serious, she doesn't love the church, or she's not serving the church, or she... Uh, she's uh, egocentric or she's selfish or she's uh, depressed or she's lonely or she doesn't relate, she's not social or she's, uh, uh, she's living a bored life or she doesn't, she's not friendly, she doesn't, uh, all kind of talk will come against you. People will think, be still saying uh, it's because she said she's not married, uh, she doesn't want to do this, she's... You know what? Let them call you egocentric as much as possible. You know the Bible says, "Love thy neighbor." I mean, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your mind, and thy neighbor, thy neighbor as thyself. So, if you don't love yourself, how will you love other people? So, learn to love yourself. Let them say you are egocentric. Learn to live to love yourself and to live with yourself. Learn to be happy with your own self. Learn to be happy with your life. Learn to love yourself, to be satisfied with yourself. If you are not satisfied with yourself, how can you bring satisfaction to other people's life or to the life of any man? Or to how, If you don't love what you see about your life, you, do, you are not enjoying your own life, what kind of joy will you bring to another person? So be busy trying to, enjoy, to, to, to fall in love with your own life. Be busy trying to fall in love with God, first of all, and love yourself. Love what you do. Be satisfied with yourself. Uh, then, then you might be, you'll be able to be a blessing to another person. But if you are going to be married and not satisfied, not being satisfied with yourself, not being happy with yourself, you, you know, uh, you will bring that uh, unhappiness to the life of another man, and that man will be very frustrated at you. That man would not like it. So, uh, only someone who is already satisfied with himself or with herself, only someone who is already fulfilled, who is already happy with herself, who is already satisfied with herself, can really bring joy and satisfaction to another life. So, so if you are going to a marriage, dreaming or looking forward to somebody to make you happy, and to make, you know, that there you find satisfaction, you know, no, no, no. You bring only what you have to marriage. You only bring there your frustration. You only bring there your unhappiness. You only bring there your your anger, your disappointment. So learn to live with yourself. Learn to be happy with yourself. Learn to love yourself and what you do before you go into marriage. Then you can bring that satisfaction, that joy, that love to that place. Otherwise, <laughs> uh, you know, marriage will be a disaster. 
marriage will be a disaster for you. Uh, marriage will be a disaster for you. Marriage will be a disaster for you. Um, by the way, what was the time? Let me see the time. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> my time is up. Yeah, I think I made my point. 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 And uh, so let's go ahead and share this link. Uh, you will see the share button under the video. Look for the share button. Let's go and share the uh, the video. Press the share button so that you could have a copy. That's the way you have a copy. When you press the share button, it will come over to your timeline, and then you'll be able to. Uh, to watch it again if you want to or send it to another person or your friends will be able to see it but while you are sharing it it will be good also for you to write uh, something write some comments or some remark some remarks for you to um you know be able to encourage people to see it maybe it will help other people so write some remarks write some comments and uh, uh yeah yeah write something as you share the video and let the ladies go and be blessed. Let them go and see. And even I think all parents need to share this with their parents, with their children. I think it would be good for you to share it with your girls and even your boys. I think every child needs to know these things so that they are not manipulated in life after all. Well, let me read some of your comments. Uh, let me read uh, some of your comments. I hope any one of you or some of you are blessed. Uh, I didn't see what what was being written, but let me see if there is if there is anything you are writing here. I've not had the time to look. Okay, there is someone who is writing a lot of, uh, many, many times writing the same thing here. Basil Elibo, marriage is an honor. Nobody actually survives without humans, uh, human affection. Some idiotic men make the good woman to get frustrated, but the same God said it is an honor if you find your true love in marriage. Nobody will be happier than you. Jesus was not a normal human, but God himself. Singleness is good, but if you find the right partner, please don't hesitate. Uh, Queen Lily uh, Brown Ho Brown's Hooger. I have always known that I don't need a husband in my life to be happy. You choose to be happy and lonely. I'm not afraid of this. Some of my friends think I'm crazy when I try to talk this over with them. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you, sir. How do I invite my friends to watch this place? Uh, well, you could just share the link. If you share the link, it will come to your timeline and your friends will be able to say it. Happy Edema said, if anybody uses the word singleness around you, she <laughs> she's the baby, that's my word. She said, you are on point, sir. <laughs> Sunshine says, develop, be, develop yourself, be grounded. Don't give up your independence because someone is pressurizing you to get married. Stop being needy of a man, yep. Lydia Olorunu, hello, my sister. I love what I heard that being single is like a time of solitude. Yep. Rochelle White says, I love solitude. Nonye Adeniji, I always tell my single friends and family to be comfortable with their status. Yep, 
they need to learn to be comfortable. Noel, Noel says, marriage does not mean we shouldn't allow some level of independence in marriage or life because, between our spouses. Marriage is a guide to self-control. It's a model to serve someone, a model to be a leader and this, this disciple someone. I, in as much as solitude is gained, marriage is covenant. Therefore, uh, if you are ready for the covenant of marital blessing, be ready to willingly solve the challenges, challenge that goal of glory and honor that wants you to give your wife, kids, and yourself. Lydia is saying, even as a married person, solitude is necessary and very beneficial. Liz Eka say, wow, this message was meant for me. Thank you, Pastor. Hello, Liz Elizabeth. Blessings to you, Liz. Uh, she she does a Peter. Great message. More great, great grace to your elbows. Uh, Louis Abraham. I only need marriage to fulfill my purpose in life and not just for the fun of it. My would be wife should be ready for love to love God more than me. She should have a purpose she is pursuing so that I will be a plus in her life. Beautiful. Mercy Olaitan said, Marriage doesn't fulfill you, get it right. Yeah, you've got to fulfill your own life and call him by yourself. Team says an unfulfilled lady cannot make a successful marriage. Well, it's difficult. Happy Edema says, are you kidding me, sir? Do you mean I've been used all this while? I need some clarification on this, sir. Throw more light on the church aspect, sir. I get it. Okay. I'm not happy right now. Yeah, you know, I have a whole series I did on the church. So go and look at the messages that have been that uh, that you have missed. I had a whole series on the church. So uh, go, follow one of the links here on the on my messages. You will see, or you go to my blog and see. There is a whole series I did on the church and on the kingdom of God. That will really help you. She, Sandra, our single ladies have been set free with these messages, Pastor. Thank you. Marianne says, singleness, it means free to fly for your purpose with no limits. Yep. Elizabeth Adeshola says, thank you very much, sir. Points taken and very understood. More wisdom, strength, anointing in Jesus' name. Thank you. Oh, Eric says you are a true mentor. Thank you. Lilia Bogdan, Spasiba Grumroy Pastor, Ocean of Now Light, Vasha Lexia. Mola des Nashito Uji Pangliski, Nashinash, Panemati Lujif Sura Zumesh, Slava Bogu. Mercy says if you don't have a vision, you will end up pursuing other people's vision. Wake up call. She does a Peter. Viewing from Vienna, your message is very educative. Thank you. Uh, Helen Reze, when you said that marriage is about solving problems, wow, 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 that stood out for me. Having a plan for yourself was awesome information too. Oluwato Ibidemi, even though the topic is for ladies, I have picked my own share as a man from these <laughs> celebrations. <laughs> Queen Lily said, I'm highly blessed. <laughs> Paul Awodele says, as a single of over 40 years old from an African background, this truth has set me free right now. <laughs> uh, Gift Amos says, I need to watch this thing again. Gladys said, this was a powerful teaching.
Timoth, Apostle Tim, Tim says, uh, uh, thanks for perfecting the ladies to be completely fulfilled before entering into marriage institution. Uh, Matthew says, I went through it all. The way I was being treated by those who were married, I even thought I was not good enough because I was single. The pressure to get married is more in the church, actually. This is uh, this will help our sisters in church to know their lives is not all about marriage. Blessings, sir. Ola Yinka uh, says, really blessed by this message. We'll advise all the single ladies, gentlemen, parents, please let your children learn from this. Anastasia, pastors still look forward to practical teachings on certain short, mid, long-term goals, please. Yeah, well, that is a totally different topic. It's going to be a totally different topic. So, sometime, sometime in the next year, maybe. <laughs> Nana Akua uh, Adoma, I'm so blessed. I'm happy to hear this morning. God bless you more. Eric, thank you very much, sir. Prince Mafo, very educative. Uh... Sandra, I'm blessed, sir. Davina, please, my brother and sister on this platform, if you agree with me on this topic, let's work together to bring this to ear on radio, TV. Girls, parents, family need to hear this teaching. Yep. You are Davida, Davina, if you are interested in that, where are you based in? Are you based in Africa or in Europe or America? You know, you need to put your information out there so that people, other people who are interested to put this on radio, TV, or other places, will be able to you know, contact you and you could plan it together and we'll do it in a more systematic way. Pauline Kamuse will say, good teaching, good preaching also for all who have opinion about singleness. Shinwe says, points noted, we'll release this truth to my girls and every single within my sphere of contact. Thank you for blessing us. Margarita Christova, my real happiness, satisfaction, and self-esteem comes from the intimate relationship with my beloved Jesus. That's so true. Uh, she, Sandra, wonderful words, sir. God bless you. Lydia or Laura, you are complete in Christ as a single person. This truth will liberate you when you go into marriage. You will retain your uniqueness and liberation once you understood that you are a complete person, single and or otherwise. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, Patrick says, thank God, Pastor, thank, th Pastor, God bless you for this eye-opening truth. Uh, Marble. Thank you, Pastor, for this great revelation. Uh, Adeshola Elizabeth, this is phenomenal and so uncommon teaching. I'm happy I am graced and chance to be a particular of it. Anastasia McDonald, perhaps the greatest demotivator is the church itself. Wow. Uh, Marianne, this, is, this teaching is aligning us with the mind of Christ fully. Davina Odushoga says, Past, God, Pastor, God bless you, this revelation. Just tell the truth. Our girls, parents, family, and society need to hear this more. These marriage issues affect girls that they take advantage of them. We need to hear this on radio, television. Please, we need to take this topic to another level. Pastor Sunday, girls are more in the world, but the pressure on us is too much, and we have been put in sorrowful state. Yeah, please let's take yeah, let's think about what we could do to popularize this message and, and make it go around. Let's you know, let's do all we can. Esther Kuganja, a big hug to you, Pastor. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Louis says, I am a pastor, but I hate church witchcraft. <laughs> Louis Abraham, you are tough for Chamberlain. 
I have been used and dumped until I cut myself free. And they said all they could about me, but today I'm better off. Thank God. <laughs> Noel Okushuku said, what, what? You mean I've been used by the churches? In fact, thank God that they see me as a rebel, even though they see me as a rebel, because I put my decision about life first. Mashu said, this is true deliverance for every single lady. Marianne said, they will say you have become too Western-minded. <laughs> And some my happy said they will call you a great sinner. Stella Nuhu, the pastor Sunday, thank you for this deliverance session from this platform. God renew the oil upon your head. Thank you. Gladys said this is amaz amazing teaching. Olayinka, God bless you, Dr. Dilaja, for always teaching the truth without fear. Thank you. Engineer Festa said, this is an eye-opener even for the men. Adeola Disu, you are indeed God's censor. It's time to put a stop to all manner of single mind, mingle night prayer. Okay, prayer meetings, seeking for their Isaac. Oh, you mean people go and do night vigils just to seek for husbands? Mm-hmm. Okay. They need deliverance for sure. Louis Abraham. Yes, sir. Yes, say it's a charismatic witchcraft that pastors used to hoodwink innocent ones. Wow. Hmm. Allah made the Elijah Oshoba. I have to listen to this again. Thank God for the grace to successful to successfully do my own thing. I think. Okay. Noel says honestly, my next word, if that truly exists, if I don't see my wife to marry, I will go on solitude till I meet till I till my wife appears. I will even ask her again, Will you like to be a professor before marrying me? Because I will wait for you. <laughs> David has said the manipulation every is everywhere, it's too bad and painful. All being done in the name of God. Oh, Lord help us. Team, Pastor Tim says, in summary, Pastor has been able to establish the fact that singleness is not a bad thing, but rather an opportunity to be occupied with purpose without distraction. Nana Akua, still with two kids, but I can live without marrying because when the word of wisdom and the word of God fill you, you will always live but rushing in marriage because you are single or you want a partner, you will find yourself in uh, errors, a mirror crying. Pastor, God bless you. Nkiro <laughs> Ojima, uh, the church witchcraft. That's so funny and so true. Uh, Uh, Bira Paka Karunaka, watching from India, Hyderabad. This is Reverend Bira, uh, Pastor of Christ Fellowship Church. You are invited to Hyderabad, India, Pastor Sunday in 2017, January. Ooh, thank you so much for the invitation, but I don't travel. <laughs> if you want, you can come and see me here in Ukraine. I'm not interested in traveling anywhere right now or after. 
the only body I have is for Africa right now. I want to go back to Nigeria and help people there. But, you know, I have our HMT for those of you who want to come and learn here. We have our conference, yearly conference here, a small indoor, closed door conference. Uh, we call it History Makers Training. It's going to be in November from 6th to 12th. So any one of you is interested, you could write to the guest, G-U-E-S-T, -E -E guest at God Embassy, one word, GodEmbassy.org. So if you are interested in coming to be with us, right, we'll be happy to have you. 6th to 12th of November. For Luke Olawan, they said, agreed with TV and radio broadcasts. It will resolve the issues we have in a lot of marriages. Olayinka Nestoria said, yes, I want to believe there should be a series of this mess men uh, of this for men as well. Oh yeah, I did the one of for men last week. Maybe you missed that. Last the whole of last week was for men. So Olayinka and others, if, those who missed that, you go follow the link that is here. We just put the link here on the comment section from me. Follow that link. You will see the messages that you have missed both before now and for men last week as well. But blessed by this message, I've been single for seven years and I have two kids, now planning to get settled down soon, but I pray I'm not going into it for a wrong purpose. This has really blessed me tremendously. Um, Goya Sharis, <laughs> thanks, Pastor, for this teaching. We women have not been forced on the right thing for most of the time of our existence. We are easily manipulated. Uh, unfortunately, and if we do not know our value and how we function, we will think it's normal and become a victim of our own selves. That is a vicious circle. Thank you for breaking that circle and setting us free from the negative perception, perception we add of ourselves. How liberating, how deliberating to know that being single is one of the best blessings you can have as a woman. We do not need men to be fulfilled, but we need them for synergy, meaning when two all beings partner up to create something greater than themselves. Thank you so, so much, sir. I am beyond enriched. Thanks for your teachings. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Christina Lampe, thank you, Pastor, for all these teachings. God anoint God anoints you, anointed you to build and rebuild nations. You don't only teach, but pass revelation to each of us. God bless you. We love you. Uh, Oshuko, thanks, Pastor, for this powerful teaching. God bless you, sir. Theodore Otto, thanks for this session, but does it mean marriage and childbirth truncates against a woman's purpose in life? In some cases, oh yeah, big time. Louis said, these days churches hardly teach you how to excel. All they care about mostly is how you can give and give until you become poor and frustrated. <laughs> wow. Victor Ogundekwe said, wow, what a first class teaching is this is. Ah, Noel says, be careful about churches that don't allow you to fulfill your life calling and be happy. And it is true that we have been used, he says. Steve Osari, in loneliness is the greatest gift given to us from God. Well noted, more anointing, Pastor. Jolomi says, one can be single and not lonely. Also, one can be married and still be lon the loneliest person in the world. In other words, marriage is not the cure for loneliness, right? Davida says, you should not feel guilty that you are not giving time to the church. You are the church also. When you are fulfilling your purpose, where, where, wherever you are, is the church fulfilling its purpose. <laughs> That's good. Okay, guys. Uh, Vivian says, Pastor Sunday, this message is more riches for us hungry people for more 
and to be taught truth. My daughters are washing now, and that's great. Seeing the look on their faces, wow. Unkiro Ojimadu, I'm married, and this teaching has made me know that I need to high up my self development at the same time, keep the balance in my house, teaching every one of my kids that. Thank you, sir. Well, I think it's about time to go. Esther Morakinho, washing from Kenya. You are a blessing to many people here in Kenya. My husband and I are doing ministry in Kenya. I've been following your teaching for years. God richly bless you. Thank you. Ola Yinka say, Dr. Adilaja, I listened to your teaching series on prayers yesterday and I realized why most of my prayers have just been talking to myself. I shared with my children how connecting with God is very important and I practice it with them. After prayers, my 11-year-old says, I feel peace in my heart. Thank you so much, Pastor Adilaja. Big hugs for you, sir. Uh, wow, well, uh, so many comments. I think I have to go now. Uh, okay, and Ogo said, Pastor, please show me in the scripture where it says that singles should not participate in church activities or live a solitary life. All the disciples were single and they sure didn't live a solitary life. I will say in all that we do, let's do in moderation because even the Bible recognizes that too, gluten is sinful. All right. Now, Anne Ogo, first of all, you will not find anywhere in the Bible where all the activities that we are having in churches today is there in the Bible, in the Bible days. So if you want to tell me to show you in the Bible where people are not supposed to do what they are doing in the church now, you have to realize that a lot of the things we are doing in the church today were not even done in the Bible. Nobody was sitting down, was sitting down in the churches in the Bible just going from to church from Monday to Friday doing some mundane thing in church. The only thing the Bible advocates for is for every person to recognize their calling, to recognize their, their, their destiny, their calling, and fulfill it and pursue it. So what the church is supposed to be doing, you should remember Anne, that I am a pastor myself, and I'm not just a pastor. I'm not your ordinary pastor. I'm, I'm a pastor that knows something about pastoring, let me say it that way. And I've been pastoring for over 20 years. And uh, I'm not just some little pastor in some corner. I have some experience about pastoring. Let me put it that way. And and <laughs> and not just have some experience, you know, with all humility, probably I'm one of the most successful pastors in the whole world from any angle, from any country, from anywhere you look at it. So I am not uh, telling you things out of uh, ignorance or things out of, the fact that I'm in error, I'm not in error. Things that I'm talking about, uh, they are coming out of what I know from experience. And uh, uh, most likely what you are talking about is what you have been taught. But uh, I'm not sure you've experienced and you've known as much, uh, you've gone through the experience of church and pastoring as much as I have done. And, uh, and I'm not sure that you know the Bible more than me too. So, um, you know, it's just what you have been taught. But I wish that God will help you to discover God for yourself and the Bible for yourself and to discover, you know, you know, the, some of these things that I'm saying. But, you know, I respect your opinion. You have your own opinion. And these are just my opinion. So, 
Anybody who wants it could take it. Anybody who wants it could reject it. But, uh, you know, these are things that I have learned from my own life. For the past 50 years of life and 30 years of Christian life, uh, Christian living and 20 years of pastoring, I'm help, trying to help real people, not just build church, not just build denomination, not just build my own ministry. And unfortunately, I know all pastors. I, I mean, the, the important pastors and the popular pastors in the world. I know everybody and everybody knows me. And so if I'm saying these things, it means there are some things that I know that you need to know or that might help you. So uh, unfortunately, churches are now more focused on using their members to fulfill the church's calling and the church's vision rather than the church helping every member to fulfill their vision. That's just unfortunate picture the way it is. But your own calling must take priority. That is just what I was about to say. Maybe it didn't come across that way, but that's what I meant. Every individual's calling must take the highest position, the first priority. All right, guys, I'll be back tonight. I'll be back tonight, and then I'll be back every day tomorrow. So if you want to know the schedule and the time when the broadcast is, go to my first page, go to my timeline, go to my, you know, you see the schedule there. We have the schedule everywhere there on my front page. So, uh, yeah, see the time when it comes on in your place, and we'll be happy to see you soon. God bless you guys. Bye.